Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Casey J. Pyle and today I'm going to be doing this makeup look with you. So if you'd like to see how to get this look, just keep watching. Alright, hi guys. I am setting up my camera right now and adjusting so you can see my face up close and personal. First off, we're going to start with the Mary Kay Cream Eyeshadow. This is in the shade Beach Blonde and it's like the perfect eye primer. I love to set my eyelids with this because it makes my eyeshadow last all day. I mean, I have only found one other primer that lasts as long as this, and that is the uh, Pure Cosmetics Get a Grip Primer. But this primer is awesome because even if you um, just wanted a simple look, you can put this on, you've already got a little pigment on your lid, and it's gonna last all day. So I'm just gonna apply that all over my lids. Um, Sometimes I go clear up to the brow bone and sometimes I just go to a little bit up to the crease or right where you can feel the bone in your lid. And so I'm applying that, making sure I've got a good layer on there, looking at the camera like a loony bin. You can see those veins in my eyelids and so that's why I usually go in with concealer. So I'm gonna grab the Perfecting Concealer in the shade Light Ivory and I just apply it right onto my eyelid. I typically do one eye at a time. So I will smear that out with either a beauty sponge or my finger. I would suggest your fingers be very clean if you do this and you don't use a beauty sponge because your skin oils will transfer onto your skin and can cause your makeup to break down faster. So a beauty sponge, sponge is actually like the most ideal to apply your concealer down at this point. But I'm gonna use my finger for today uh, because I just really wasn't thinking about it. <laughs> so I'm gonna put my concealer on both eyes and I'm gonna smudge it out make sure I cover up those lines those veins that I show in my lid uh, it doesn't have to be totally totally covered uh, because my eyeshadow will do the rest but I want to make sure I kind of have a baseline and a really nice canvas for my eyeshadows because my base is all one color instead of having different pigmentation across my eyelid which a lot of people have if you're blessed with literally one color on your eyelid, that's awesome. But mine varies from like pink to light to I have literal veins on my eyes. So I like to cover those up. I'm going to kind of smudge it out into my nose to make sure I don't have a really sharp line there and it doesn't sit down as a sharp line. So I'm just smudging that out. Now I'm going to take my uh, Pro Palette. This is a magnetic palette that holds lots of eyeshadows. First off, I'm going to start with the color Biscotti. It's the shade I'm pointing to right there. And I'm gonna take brush from Luxie. So I'm going to apply that onto my lid. Currently I'm actually setting it down. So I'm using that brush to set down my uh, concealer with the shade Biscotti, which is kind of like a, a really, really light skin color shade. So I'm just gonna set that down with the Biscotti color and this Luxie brush. I'm moving it all over my eyelid and making sure it's all set down so I can have a nice finish. Um, the powder, putting the powder down makes it nice for the eyeshadows to be able to blend out a little easier. So now I'm going to go into the shade Hazelnut and I believe I'm gonna take this same Luxie brush to go into my transition. I'm going to put that in windshield wiper motions into the crease of my eye to create a transition. So I'm just gonna do that on both eyes and build it up to the intensity that I like. I usually find the crease between where your eyelid ends and where your, well the, the lid like right above your eye and you feel that bone in there and I'm going to take that crease and that's where I'm going to put my eyeshadow right now. Then I'm going to blend it up and out to make sure there's no harsh lines before I dip into the next eyeshadow. Next up, I'm going to take this Alamar Cosmetics brush. It's a nice fluffy brush. And I'm going to dip that into the shade Merlot. So it's this nice kind of purple color, a warm purple. And I'm gonna dip into, is that warm? Maybe it's cold purple. Anyways, I'm gonna put that at the very bottom of my crease. So I'm taking that fluffy brush and I'm buffing this into the crease area that's closest to my eyelid. I wanna make sure I buff it into the other one so there's no harsh lines, but I'm wanting to get a deeper um, pigmentation closer to my eyelid. It makes your lids just really dramatic when you give it even two shades. Then I'm gonna blend it up a little bit. I wanna make sure it blends with the other shades and I don't have any specific lines like I just said. I always blending, 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 blending. Blending is your best friend when you do makeup. Then I assess both eyes, make sure they're even, make sure I'm liking it. Next up, I'm gonna take this Lexi brush. This is, I believe this is a Lexi 249 brush and I'm going to uh, continue to blend that out. This has no pigmentation on it so I'm just using it to blend all that pigment. I wanna make sure it all goes seamlessly together. 
The first Lexi brush I used, I find is not my favorite brush. It's a decent brush for like a large pigment or something you're gonna put all over your lid, but I love, love, love this brush by Luxie. This is a really good brush. Now I'm gonna take that same Merlot shade and I'm going to go onto the outer third of my eye. So from the outer area of my lash line, in on my lid about a third of the way. I'm gonna buff that into both the transition and into the lid. Once again, making sure I don't have any lines. And I'm going to make this kind of what uh, deepens my eye and makes it pop a little bit. Then I'm gonna make sure I just blend it in with the rest of the, the shades I have on my lid so we have a nice cohesive look. So I'm just making sure the pigmentation is strong enough and blending once again before I go in with the next shade. I'm going to take and blend that transition one more time using that first Luxie brush just to make sure everything is really blended. And now I'm gonna take a nice like thin brush. This brush has a kind of a flat point. Um, and I'm gonna take that and I'm going to apply the Merlot shade on my lower lash line. I'm going about halfway in, maybe a little over half probably more, yeah, a little over half, more like three quarters of the way in. And I'm gonna use this kind of like a, like an eyeliner. So I'm lining my eyes with this and it gives it just an extra pop and really make a, a statement out of that color. I'm gonna take that up onto my lid and kind of apply it as if it were eyeliner in the corners and blend it out just so I make sure that the line is continuous. And that's how you know it looks really, really nice is when your lower lash line blends up to your, up, um, to your lid. Then I'm just making sure it's blended and I'm gonna take that fluffy brush again, blend out any harsh lines. Next up, I'm gonna take this uh, Alamar Cosmetics brush with a nice flat tip and I'm going to use that to pack on a shimmer shade. I'm gonna go in with this shade called Gold Status and I'm going to uh, get that all over the brush so I can pack it onto my lid. So I'm gonna apply that right near the Merlot shade, right over the edge of it. So I'm kind of uh, filling in the gap between uh, how my lid was like basically skin color and then it's suddenly purple. So I'm gonna go over that line a little bit so it fades and then I'm gonna apply it over the rest of my lid. It gives that really nice pretty pop. I love gold and purple paired together. It's such a pretty combination. Then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna drag it a little bit where I feel the crease. It's almost like a cut crease feeling, but not quite. I'm not gonna put concealer there and make a cut crease pigment. I'm just gonna make sure it fills exactly where I want it to fill. And I'm packing it on, making sure it's to the pigmentation that I desire. Next, I'm gonna grab my transition shade and just blend over that so I don't have any harsh lines once again. Can't say that enough, blend so no harsh lines. I am going to grab the gold shade once again and I'm just gonna put a little bit on my inner corner. I'm gonna make that pop just a tiny bit and then take it onto my lower lash line. Then I'm taking that flat brush and just kind of trimming up the edges underneath. I'm putting the gold underneath the purple just so lightly so it kind of fades with that purple there. Now I'm going to take a, another fluffy brush. This is by Moda and I'm going to use this to add this light color, this is called Biscotti, and I'm going to apply that up by my brow bone. So I'm gonna give kind of a natural highlight because it's a matte shade, so I'm just applying that underneath my brow to give some nice natural highlight. Then I'm going to carry it in towards my nose a little bit. I like to place it there so any pigmentation that would have a sharp line next to my nose can be covered and it blends very well. So I'm going to go in with the Lancome eyeliner. Uh, this is one I've had for quite a while. I may need to actually dispose of this one and get a new one or use my other more recent one. I've had this one for quite a while so it took a moment to get on. Um, if you sharpen these, they can stay sanitary for quite a while, but sometimes if it's not recently sharpened, the pigmentation may not be as good as you want it. So I swatched it on my hand a little bit, got it going a little bit more, and then I went back to apply it on my lid. So I'm applying from the outer corner to inner corner. It looks like I'm tugging on my lid, but I'm not. I'm just, I mean, I'm tugging, but it's very light. I'm not ripping at my skin or anything. And I'm gonna apply that 
a couple times till I get the desired thickness that I want. And I'm applying on both sides, outer corner to inner corner. And um, then I'll do lower lash line and a small wing. So I just, it was really simple. What I like about this eyeliner is that it's, it's black color is not like insanely black. I feel like it's more of a natural black. So it's something that I can get away with as a fair girl. When I usually wear brown, I feel like if I really want to dramatize it, I can put a little bit of this black on. So I'm dragging the black eyeliner just about halfway under the eyelid and I'm um, bringing it in not quite as far as the purple but I'm kind of letting it fade as the purple ended that we put on our lower lash line. And then I'm doing a small wing. I do it on both sides until they match. Um, I'm no pro wing person. It's almost easier to do a wing with a liquid eyeliner but this way is so simple and I like to do this for every day. I kind of just give it a baby wing to widen my eyes and make them look a little bit bigger than they are. Now I'm gonna make a really funny face while I take that purple brush that I used earlier for the lower lash line and blend the purple into that black liner because I don't want to have a really intensive black line. I want it to kind of fade together so I'm going to brush them together. The Mary Kay eyeliners dry within seven seconds so if you apply one you gotta go quickly to uh, blend it out. This is the Chella liquid eyeliner in brown I believe. I will also link this below. Um, I'm going to do this to sharpen up my eyeliner. I'm doing that liquid line to get the really really sharp line and this is more of a the look I end up doing is more intense than I totally do every day because the wings are more pronounced and I like to keep my eyeliner thick or thin on my eyelid and so when it gets a little thicker that's more of a not everyday thing for me if that makes sense. So I'm dragging that in on my lid ever so lightly, building it up to my desired look. And then I'm just making sure the tips are nice and sharp. Then I'm going to try to uh, seamlessly put them together. So I'm going to begin to take that liquid eyeliner over where I applied the pencil eyeliner and just make them blend together so it doesn't look like one stops where the other one is going and it also really really intensifies my eyeliner look so this makes the eyeliner really pop um, if you wanted to keep it simple I would suggest not going in with the liquid eyeliner over the top but sometimes this makes for a really pretty dramatic eye so then I'm just taking it in a little bit uh, kind of towards my tight line and I'm going to darken up any areas near my lash line so there's no big gaps sometimes when you apply liquid eyeliners um, it, I don't know, you get kind of a gap where your skin color is. And so if you tight line, it can help you get rid of that and just make a really nice solid finish. Now we are going to apply some mascara. This is the Mary Kay uh, Lash Love Mascara. I'm running a little bit low, so I'm working on with what I got left. I mean, I will get some more, but I really, really like this mascara. So I'm just going to apply it in coats and I'm going to build it up on one eye and then build it up on another and come back and build it to my desired effect. Um, if you do the coat method, then you can actually make them look really nice and voluminous instead of really chunky. Like sometimes you'll see people and their lashes look like tarantula legs and it's because they did it in a really chunky method. Some people like that look, so that's up to their, that's like to their discretion, to their um, opinion. What is the word I'm looking for? That's up to their preference. There we go. That's the word I wanted. And then um, I just continue to apply it and I use it in layers so I can get a voluminous look instead of that really thick look. So I'll just speed this process up and we'll stop when I'm done putting mascara on because you don't need to sit here the whole entire time I do it. Now that my eyelashes are done, I'm going to move on to the face. So I think that they look pretty decent for running out of a mascara tube. We are going to grab primer first. This is the Mary Kay Broad Spectrum Primer with SPF 15. This is my favorite primer, it's so good. I'm gonna use the Mary Kay Foundation Brush to apply it. Uh, when you apply it with your fingertips, if you're going to do that, to make sure to you have clean hands and clean fingertips so you don't transfer any hand oils onto your face to make your makeup break down quicker. Uh, when I apply it, I apply it in circular strokes 
and uh, back and forth motion so I make sure that I fill the pour in from a 360 degrees or yeah 360 degrees this helps to make sure that the pour goes away it looks invisible and it's filled from every direction instead of just filled from one direction uh, sometimes you'll notice primers that it's supposed to be pour filling and then you feel like your pores aren't filled make sure you apply it in 360 it's totally filled from every direction I love this primer if I had to have only one actual face product on my face this would be it if I could only have like four different things I would choose brows lashes primer and then either an eyeliner or a matte or either an eyeliner or eyeshadow one or the other so I really really love this primer it makes my skin just look so much better when I apply this so I make sure I never skip this step it makes the whole overall process look great and if I don't have time for foundation it just makes my skin look that much better so if you look really close, now you can see that my pores have been filled in. Some of the things you couldn't see before are, are that you can see before now are masked. My nose looks so airbrushed instead of having all those little tiny pores exposed because I do have rather large pores. So I love to make sure that this primer is on and cover those up. Now I'm going to move to the Mary Kay uh, Luminous, or this is the matte foundation, TimeWise Matte 3D Foundation. This foundation is awesome as a matte. <laughs> Excuse me, I just dropped my lid on the floor. I'll get that afterwards. I am going to use this foundation. This is the great is a great matte foundation because I really really like how it dries down and I like that it doesn't make me too oily throughout the day. I find sometimes when I use matte products they actually cause my face to dry and get more oily because my skin can't catch up um, with the dryness. It tries to create more moisture. So I really love this foundation because it's water based and it blends well with my skin. It doesn't break down like some foundations do and you get these ugly circles as it breaks down. This one doesn't do that. It fades nice and naturally when it does actually begin to break down. And then I'm going to just apply this all over my face and build it to the desired coverage that I want. I would say this can be anywhere from light to um, pretty decently full coverage. When I use this brush, it's more of a light to medium coverage. And if I use the Mary Kay blending brush, um, it's like, a much more compact brush and that brush makes it more for full coverage because my uh, one of my friends uses that brush with her foundation and it's very very full coverage that's how she likes it super super full coverage anybody with acne that's really trying to cover maybe some discolorations you can use this with the uh, Mary Kay blending brush and you're gonna get a much more full coverage effect so I'm just continuing to apply this to the back of my hand and build it up on my face. Don't put it directly onto the brush because it will begin to um, move its way down into the bottom of the bristles and it will change the shape of the brush. And the brush is designed to have that shape for a reason. If you get rid of it, you're actually um, ruining the shape of the brush and its effect on your face. Um, it'll also build up and ruin the brush a lot quicker if you do apply it directly to the brush because you just shove it down into the brush fibers. So make sure to apply it to your hand first and make sure your hand is clean so I'm dragging that down my neck and on my jawline just to make sure I have a seamless transition and it doesn't look like I have a face of one color and suddenly my neck's a different color you always want to make sure you blend out those lines so it looks like it actually is your face and it isn't just this mask you put on granted some could argue this is a mask because it isn't your real face no but we're enhancing our natural beauty and we're making ourselves feel confident I mean if this is how you feel confident go for it if this is what makes you feel like you can power through the day put some makeup on I mean it helps you look elevated it makes you look put together you don't have to wear much to do that though you can wear something simple just to make you look like I am ready to be here today and I'm ready to kick some hiney all right, so I'm just going to continue adding till I get my desired effect filling in. I'm making sure that that edge where my eyeshadow was, I'm cleaning that up for a nice straight edge um, because that is more of a, because the eyeliner is a little thicker, it gives it a little bit more of a dramatic look. So I'm making sure I have a nice fine edge right there and I don't um, have pigment everywhere. 
I'm going to also brush into my hairline to make sure that I don't have any lines up there. I mean, have you seen it when women have a line there where their hairline or their jawline and you see the makeup actually end? You really wanna to try to avoid that, so brush it into the hairline and brush it down the jawline. Now I'm gonna take, this is the uh, Mary Kay Eyeliner and Brow Brush, and I'm going to take that on the edges of my hairline and just brush that out and as goofy as this sounds, this is gonna blend the foundation into that area and take any pigmentation that's on the hair off so I don't look like I have makeup on my hair. So this is a really good trick. You can also spray it with a setting spray and it'll make it work even better. Next, I'm gonna take that Perfecting Concealer. This is in the shade Deep Ivory, and I'm going to apply this under my eyes um, to try to brighten up any dark or discoloration I have under my eyes. Uh, I couldn't find my color corrector before this, otherwise I would have used the two together. But I can also just use my concealer. Make sure to use one that's close to your skin tone and not too light, otherwise it will give it away in photos and you actually look kind of funny if you have really, really light under eyes instead of a blend and your eye, under eyes just look a little bit brighter. You're covering up dark circles and discoloration, not making your under eyes look like they're like totally different triangles. All right, now we're gonna go back into my Pro Palette. I'm gonna open it up. And now I'm going to use the uh, contour shade. So this shade is called Latte, and I will link it also. This brush is by Aesthetica, and I'm going to dip it into the shade Latte, and I'm going to give my face a little bit of dimension. I kind of use this as a bronzer sometimes, and sometimes I use it as a contour. I get like the actual direct lines, but when I use a fluffier brush, I use it more like a bronzer, actually, and I just give my skin a little bit of glow and dimension. This kind of helps um, make your face look uh, thinner to an extent because you bring back your bone structure and then uh, this also helps me make my giant forehead look a little smaller but it's the forehead I was given and I'm going to love it. I'm going to take that up by my ears. You want to bring it up towards your ears and then um, into your face. Don't bring it super super far in though because then you'll actually drag your teeth cheek structure down. I'm going to go along my jawline and then down on my neck to make sure it's nice and blended and then anywhere I see lines I'm just going to blend out a little bit more. Then I'm going to blend into the hairline once again just to make sure I don't have any fine lines. Now I'm going to take Oh, looks like I'm gonna mix things up today. I'm going to contour with, this is the Makeup Revolution Contour Palette. I'm gonna take that uh, kind of the second to lightest brown shade and I'm gonna give my cheeks a little bit more definition here. I was going for more of an all out look this day so I guess I went back in with some more color. This palette cost me 15 bucks at Ulta quite a while ago. I probably need to um, rethink owning it because it's been a hot minute. And I used the tar out of it when I first got it. A good, uh, good deal for $15 if you're really into this. Um, so I'm just taking that by my ear once again and blending it where I used the latte for a little bit more of an intense contour than simply a um, warming the skin that I usually do. I am not quite as intense into contour as I was for a while. I kind of just work with my natural beauty and I like to make it stand out, make it pop, uh, work with what I can, but I don't go super crazy on my every day. Then I'm going to go in with uh, the Translucent Loose Powder by Mary Kay and I'm going to use this Real Techniques, Real Techniques Powder Brush. I'm gonna apply that all over my face to blend it together and make sure there's no harsh lines. This is super important, especially when you do contour so you make sure you don't just have random stripes on your face. So I'm also gonna blend into my hairline, making sure everything's blended once again down my neck, making sure that looks good. See, I can look and I'm evaluating, seeing what I think of it. I'm going to now grab, so now I'm taking this brush. This is a Moda brush as well, and it's a really nice fluffy brush. I like to use this for blush. I'm gonna go into the Alomar Cosmetics uh, Blush Trio, and I'm going to take the shade Scorcher and apply that as my blush. I really, really enjoy this shade. It's nice and warm, perfect summer shade. These blushes are really, really great. If I didn't have a Mary Kay blush, I would highly suggest the Alomar blushes. 
I love these. So I'm gonna warm up my cheeks a little bit with that. It's nice and subtle so you can build it to where you want it or keep it really light and just a taste of it. I'm gonna put a little bit more on my face to give a seamless coverage. Um, it makes the color reappear enough times that you believe it's not just a blush on your cheeks. And then I'm gonna go in with this Artist Couture highlight. This is a golden highlight. I'll link it below as well. I really love this highlighter. It's such a beautiful glow and it's very intense. You can make it quite little or you can build it to this gorgeous intensity. And I just love, love, love this highlighter. I'm gonna apply that from the inside of my cheeks out to my uh, cheekbone. This makes it look more natural instead of looking like there's just a stripe on your face. I'm gonna blend that out so I have a very lit from within glow. I'm gonna apply it on my cupid's bow in the bottom of my lips just to give me a little bit of definition there. A little bit of a pout, just ever so lightly on my nose. You can see that that was quite intense. I'm going to apply it onto my forehead in the bone area where you can feel bone in your forehead and give myself more of a summer lit vibe or dewy vibe. Then I'm gonna take my translucent loose powder once again and I'm gonna put this all over my face again because I wanna make sure that all the colors are blended together. I don't ever wanna look like I have stripes all over my face. So when you blend them together, it makes them look more subtle and more like your face just looks like that. Obviously you can tell I have makeup on, but this helps it look a little more natural instead of totally striped and very, very makeup-y. All right, next I'm gonna go in with the Mary Kay Brow Liner. This is a precision brow liner in the shade uh, Dark Blonde. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna go just under my brow and then out towards the end. It's always best to actually fill the outside of your brow first and then come into the inside of your brow. If you make the front of your brow too thick and heavy, it actually ages you and makes you look older. So you just go from your little tear duct up to your brow, draw in the brow, and make sure you do the outside first. This is a really hard habit to build up. Sometimes I even find myself still going to the front of the brow and filling it in first, but I can always tell the difference when I fill in the outside of my brow first. I always look so naturally young and beautiful instead of looking kind of blocky. Um, if you like the block brow, I guess do you but uh, this is how you look more natural in your age instead of making you look a lot, lot older. When you do a block brow, it ages you. I like to take a uh, flat edge brush and always sharpen up or crisp in any area I don't like of my brow, fill in any spot or cut any spots that look a little too full or like I got out of the angle. And then I make sure I just have it nice and finely tuned. Next up, I'm going to grab the Volumizing Brow Tint by Mary Kay. This is in the shade Blonde, and it's kind of a little spoolie at the end with a pigment on it. And this gel helps lock your brows in place and make them last quite a while. If you're somebody that already has beautiful big brows and you want to just lock them in place, this would be something for you. It's just gonna lock them in place, give it a little bit of pigment, and fill in any sparse areas. I do this to lock my brows in place and to make them look a little fuller because I just simply have very tiny brows. I have a borderline thyroid and for some odd reason people with borderline thyroids tend to have quite sparse brows. So this is what I do to try to fill them in a little bit and make them a little bit thicker and feather, uh, more of a feathered effect. Now I'm going to go in for my lips. This is an LA Colors, this is an LA Colors brow liner. Let me double check and make sure that's what it is. Yes, LA Colors brow pencil. And this is in the shade brown. Um, I really like this for my brows as well, but it's an awesome lip liner for what I'm gonna go with in a uh, kind of a brown or a deeper color. It's a really nice natural lip liner. So I'm using this on my lips right now. And I actually, had my camera stop there for a second. So I finished lining my lips and then I went in with a little bit of this lip stick that I used. It is the Tarte Lip Paint um, Liquid Lipstick. And I'm going to apply this on my lips. And I already have a little bit on because the camera did shut off. And so now I'm just gonna go over it to make sure you guys see what I'm doing. So I'm applying that on my lips. Um, I will put the color in the description. I really like this nude color. It's really pretty and it has just enough of a pink hue to give you kind of a sweet romantic look. All right, so this is the final look. 
And this is similar to the look I did on my wedding day. I did kind of purples. I added a little bit more brown that I didn't include today. And I used a little bit deeper lip. Um, and my contour was just a little bit heavier. But this is a very good uh, makeup look for if you're getting married, you just want a simple look. Maybe you just want to look a little bit extra on a daily basis. Or you're going to go get your photo taken with your family. There's a lot of reasons you could use this look. I really enjoy this look. I felt beautiful. I felt good. I felt like my eyes popped and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. All right guys, so that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed. I just realized that that thing's still sitting behind me. That's gonna be really aesthetically pleasing. My bad. Oh well. I've been trying some new setups in here, so forgive me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful. I will um, make sure to include all the products in the description below and uh, links to go purchase those if you would like to. If you have any other videos you'd like to see me do, make sure to comment them so I can get them done for you. I just got this camera. This is my birthday present. So I am working on learning how to use it. And uh, hopefully this video, my first video using this camera, turned out pretty decent. And that you guys enjoyed. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. And hit the subscribe if you'd like to hang out with me every time I upload. And then make sure to hit the notification bell if you want to be notified as to when I upload. So... Anywho, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you will uh, come hang out with me later. All right, have a good day, guys. Bye.